Hi, my name is Matilda and in today's video I will show you how to replace a lining in your coat or jacket to really prolong its life. I'm super excited to share this with you. In this video I will show you how I'm replacing the lining in my husband's winter coat, this one here. I will show you how to replace the lining so you also can replace the lining in your jacket or coat might be an old coat or jacket you have or something you found secondhand or vintage that just needs some sprucing up. So this coat, my husband has had it for years. He loves it. It fits him really, really well. And it's not easy to find a good winter coat that both suits your taste, your budget and fits you really, really well. And this fits him really, really well. So until he finds another coat, I'm going to replace this lining, prolong its life and I'm gonna show you how you, as well, can replace your lining in your old jacket or coat. So first of all, I'm gonna start to speak about fabric choice. So when you are replacing the lining in your jacket or coat, you wanna go for silky but strong. Not silky, I meant slinky, slippery, Slippery but strong. In a lot of the commercial garments, the most linings are made of polyester, acetate or nylon. If you have a very, very nice wool coat, you might want to consider using silk uh, because silk is strong and slippery. Uh, however, in this garment, in my husband's coat, this, it's a River Island coat from years ago. I'm not gonna spend more on the lining fabric than what the coat it cost news. So me and my husband bought some fabrics this winter when we were in Sweden. He wanted to really go for a similar style to what the coat already has. So it's black here and then it has this nice white pinstripe fabric in the sleeves. And you can see here it's really really falling apart. The most similar we found was like a black acetate fabric like this and then for the sleeves we're going for this beautiful viscose fabric and it also has a bit of a slippery 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 finish to it basically you don't want to have anything any fabrics that you easily get caught up on like nothing rough you want to be able to like move around easily so that is really really important in terms of fabric choice in my leather jacket that I actually have here I selected uh, like a um, cotton fabric here because I really wanted to have a fun print so this is like a dress shirt fabric like a thinner cotton that has more like a soft finish to it and in the sleeves I selected an acetate fabric I have had it since 2004 I love it and around three years ago the zipper broke uh, you had to literally just pull it over your head like a pullover to get into it. Obviously I had to replace the zipper but my lining was broken and that was so broken that it I didn't know if it even was a point in replacing it. Replacing the zipper because the lining was so broken so I actually thought maybe I need to get a new leather jacket. Well later on I was like maybe I can actually make a new lining from the existing lining then go to the leather tailors and ask them to put this lining in and replace it for me, which is what I did. So now let's get into how you also can reline your coat or jacket. Grab your seam ripper. We will start with removing the old lining. I started the seam rip at the neck at the center back. Make sure not to rip the fabric too much as we will use the old lining to create a pattern for the new one. When unripping, take notes and or photos to document pleats, seam allowance, pockets, where the coat is attached to the lining, for example, swing tags and how the hemline is folded, etc. 
Once you have removed the lining from the coat, it's time to separate the pieces so they can lay flat and we can clone them into pattern pieces. If there are any pleats, dots, cut notches at the edge to mark them and mark darts with chalk or fabric marker. If you want to make any alterations to the coat, it's the perfect time to do so whilst the lining is removed. Just make sure that any changes are reflected in the lining as well. I also made sure to remove any dust and clean the coat before attaching the new lining. Mark grain line on each piece. Generally they run parallel to the center front, center back and the center of the sleeve. But double check your lining fabric to check the grain line required. Iron your pieces so they can lay fat and use the most intact parts of the lining and tape any ribs or similar to help fabric lay flat if needed. If needed, label to prevent confusion later. When making your pattern, refer to your photos and always follow original instructions if it differs from what I'm showing you in this video. If you, unlike me, do not have a vent or your vent is located at the center back, which you can see mine isn't, you can fold your back piece in half. However, as my vent is located off center back, I will copy the full back piece. Now it's time to clone your old lining pieces. You can use tracing paper from the local fabric store or that you order online, craft paper, medical paper, parchment paper, or even printing paper. Tape together if it's all you have. If your edges are relatively neat, you do not even need to trace the pattern to paper and you can trace straight onto fabric. However, if major areas are missing or generally vague, I would suggest you to trace your pieces onto paper first and recreate what's missing. Mark seam allowances, grain lines, notches, folds, pleats, pockets, etc. onto your pattern pieces of fabric. Now it's time to cut the lining fabric. Smooth and make sure your fabric is laying flat, pinning salvages together. This will help the most slippery fabrics like mine to lay in place. Make sure your pattern pieces lay aligned with your grain line. Cut out your pieces and transfer any markings to the lining like what I'm doing here, marking out the vent. comes an optional step. Generally, as it is a lining, you do not need to search your zigzag edges. However, if your fabric frays a lot like mine, you might want to consider this or do like me using Fray Check. 
Freshik is a seam sealant that prevents fabric from fraying. When using Freshik, gently apply it along the edges of the fabric. Let fabric sit for 5 to 10 minutes, then cut off any excess threads. Now it's time to assemble the new lining. Start by sewing the side seams together. Once you've done the side seams, it's time to do the shoulder seams. Then pin and stitch the sleeves together. Press seams on the sleeves, on the shoulder, and on the side seams. Make sure that the sleeves will be applied correctly. Do check your pattern and if needed, mark back and front of sleeve cap. Now it's time to do basin stitches at the sleeve cap, which allows for some ease in the sleeves. With the biggest stitches possible on your sewing machine, stitch around the sleeve cap. Then pull thread to gather the sleeve cap before inserting the sleeve into the body of the lining. With right sides together, pin top of sleeves together with shoulder seam, pin arm seams into your notches, Then move over to your sewing machine and attach the sleeves. Remove the basting stitches and then press. Now I'm going to attach a double weld pocket to my lining. I really should have done this before I attach the side, shoulder and sleeves together. So I really would recommend you to do all the details like pockets, dots, etc. before stitching the lining together. If you want the full tutorial on how to make a weld pocket, check out the link in the description below. Now the lining is done and ready to be attached to the coat. Pull through the sleeves wrong sides together. Pin sleeve to hem, 
then repeat on the other side. I do this to keep the sleeve lining in place while attaching the lining to the neck as well as the facing. Then I pull the sleeves out and with the right sides together I am pinning the lining to the coat facing as well as around the neck. Then sew around to attach. This is how the lining looks after I've turned the coat around again. Unfortunately it was really bulky around the neck which made it hard to attach the lining nicely. Through the process I realized when making the coat the lining must have been attached to the back facing and then being top stitched through the seam or the back upper collar. I wasn't prepared to redo and unpick any stitches at this point so I decided to hand stitch the even out and strengthen the neck. Before doing so I base stitched the lining and press it in place. I unfortunately didn't catch any on my hand sewing on camera. Now it's time to attach the coat sleeves to the lining. I start by measuring out the hem fold on the sleeve, pin and then press. Then pin sleeves together, making sure to line up the underarm seams to make sure sleeves are not getting twisted sound together. Then repeat on the other side. The sleeves will now create this funny circle. Then stitch coat sleeves together with the lining sleeve. Now it's time to finish the hem. If your coat was open, you want to make sure to hem the lining. Otherwise, turn the coat and attach your lining according to the notes you made. My coat had a vent and I made a whole separate video on how to attach a vent to a lining. If this applies to you, I would recommend you to check that video out. I've linked that video in the description below. step only applies to all of you who have a closed bottom of your lining. In one of your sleeves, unpick 20 to 30 cm depending on how thick your coat is. Then turn the coat inside out, pull through the sleeve with a hole in it. Next step is optional, but I like to do it to prevent the lining from sliding all over the armholes. And that is to attach the lining to the armhole with either swing tags or a little piece of fabric like me. Reach through the hole in the sleeve lining, grab the underarm seams from both lining and shell. Bring them through the hole and then either do swing tags or attach a ribbon around 3.5 to 4 cm long. Then repeat on the other arm. Now it's time to close the seam at the sleeve. Pin the two layers together. And then stitch as close to the edge as possible. You can of course also hand stitch if you want, but I stitch on the machine as you will not see this part of the sleeve, as well as it's faster. 
then give your coat or jacket that final press. So the coat is finally done! Look! Look! I know you can't see that much right now, but I took some footage of my husband wearing the coat. I know you can't see loads of the lining, but I think you get a better idea how it looks. So thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did, give it a big old thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I will have more DIY tutorials coming up, other mending projects and a lot of other videos on how to live an amazing sustainable life. So if you do not want to miss any of those, make sure as well to hit that notification bell. Also if you have any ideas, maybe you have something at home that you do not know what to really do with and so yeah like let me know in the comments below because i would love to share more videos on how to mend your clothes and really prolong their life and prevent them from ending up in landfill let me know in the comments below and yeah until next time hey dog